Hey there, Wayne D. Francesco. We're back again with uh, the man of the hour. Didn't quite pull it off, but pretty great performance by Tommy Two Gloves, Tommy Ganey. So definitely the announcers were having a lot of fun with it. His swing looks a little ungainly. His grip is is pretty strange. So if you you take a look. Let's see what we got. We had the. Uh, we had a picture of that grip. Anyway, now what I want to do, what I wanted to show you, if you look on the right, there it is. There's that grip. So you can see here, he got his left thumb completely off the club, which is pretty wild. My dad does that, but he's got arthritis like crazy so and his right hand is almost palm up so of course that's going to cause some interesting things to need to happen during the swing but what I wanted to show you is how effectively he routes the club into impact so on the right here we have one of my all-time favorite guys Lee Trevino one of the best ball strikers in history course you know if if we might as well get it over with talking about dipping so Trevino raised up a hair and then check this out <laughs> well how could he be any good he doesn't maintain his levels Nick that maintain his spine angle what's wrong with you anyway so here's Tommy Now he bends over a huge amount, uh, much more so than, than Trevino, but now this was a pretty, I think this is a still camera shot, so it's not a perfect angle, but let's watch how he comes down into the ball. Look where those hands are. See, that's one of the big keys to how players hit the ball where they're aiming is the ability to bring the shaft. Now this camera moved around a little bit, but you can kind of get an idea with Trevino how nicely that how nicely that works there. So here's another shot. This was more on the target line. You can see how far left Trevino would aim. Now watch where this comes in. Now, you wonder why Trevino won six majors? Look at that. I mean, there's only a few guys that can bring a club in on the shaft plane. Gary Player was one of them. Trevino is one of them. Uh, from what I've seen in the modern era, uh, Sergio is one of them. But some of these guys now, like this is a homemade action by Ganey, you know. But look what it look what he's figured out for himself here. He's got it coming out away. lifted in front of him. Now one of the keys of this to this lifting action with this right arm is the left arm is that the right arm doesn't get behind the body very much. And then when the pivot drops, watch that right leg. So this is a huge part of what's going on here. When you look at this area of his body, that's called internal right hip rotation. So that allows him to drive forward and twist himself around, open up his trunk, and get that club to drop where that left arm was was way up in front of him here, to fall all the way down to where the club comes in, pretty close to the shaft plane. So again, inward inward movement with the right hip, opening the body and driving it forward. Now, if we if we look at an interesting view of him from the front, 
and then we go to the same sort of view. Here's another pretty good player. So let's watch, let's watch two gloves. So there's the there's the compression right there. Now watch the right leg. You can see the drive is inward, and that twists those hips. So you can see the weight pound into his left. A little bit of heel lift. So here's Ben Hogan. A little bit of heel lift. Now watch the right twist, drive, boom. Now before you would, you see it from this angle, you might think that he's moving forward into his left knee, but watch the left heel. Bang. If he was moving forward into that knee, his, his heel wouldn't pop into the ground like that. You'd see him get heavy on, his, on the front of his foot. And if you look at all the other swings of Hogan, what you'll find is as the forward drive initiates from the ground that the right hip is twisting and driving inward and not out toward the ball because Hogan stayed in the box as well as anybody so with Ganey you can see the same sort of thing and pretty similar as far as the timing of that goes too so let's go back and, and take a look at at an iron shot here. So, tremendous amount of, of bend, this huge amount of posture. Now, remember, his right hand is all the way underneath the club, so he's going to have to to get his hands way forward as he gets to the ball. So, club comes out, looks a little shut. Notice that the pivot motion is pretty simultaneous. There's no, he's not trying to restrict his lower, but watch the knees, watch when he moves forward. Right now, now. <laughs> he's moving forward before the left arm is parallel to the ground. Now you won't see many transitions like that. Now pronounced bowing of the left wrist and bend so that's going to allow him to set the right wrist. And now it's really going to be up to his body, his pivot, to drive this thing down and around. So he was hitting wedges 160 yards. It was pretty amazing. So I've done this on a couple of players. Watch when I draw the line from the left tip of the left shoulder into the waist. I mean, one of the things you'll see with a lot of these guys that are that are doing well is a tremendous amount of tilt in the pivot now I've had this question asked me a bunch of times it's like how do you lower that much and not whack into the ground so again he's hitting the ball and he's down here he was already way bent over and he's about seven or eight inches down even more. Now everybody's doing this, but of course the only guy that gets crap for it is Tiger. And the answer is that by the time the hands get here, they're already past the ball. And as the as the club is at this level, now the grip has to go up while the club head comes down the plane. So if the grip is up, you can see it. You're not gonna you're gonna lean it forward enough to hit the divot in front of the ball. So to hit down, the grip comes up. So that's pretty cool. Now again with the driver that's out now I wanted to I wanted to do another comparison here so we'll do this and let's take a look at Graham McDowell 
Now, he's got a more inward takeaway, so his left arm doesn't raise as much. But take a look at the at the similarity at the top. I mean, the shafts are almost identically laid back. Pretty damn close. And again, a tremendous amount of lowering in the forward swing with McDowell. Same thing with Ganey. Now, the grip dictates that when Ganey goes through the ball, he really has to keep this right arm bent. While McDowell is going to chase down the line. So grip type makes a big difference in the release pattern. So McDowell's going to chase and finish up higher. Ganey is going to come around to a low finish. And then he... <laughs> He gives it the Arnie move. It's kind of fun to watch because he's just lashing at the thing. Bang. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Now, another thing that you'll notice is the, the pace of the swing. It's, it's extremely fast, but rhythmical. So if you timed it out, it's still going to be three to one. And the other thing that matched up nicely for him was his putting stroke was effectively super short and fast too. But look, this guy's won at every level. He won on the nationwide. He, you know, he won at the Hooters Tour. He's going to probably win on the tour. I mean, it was unfortunate what happened to him on 17, but you know, that's growing pains on the tour. So. I think he's going to do fine. So anyway, you know, when you're just getting started out on the tour and you can compare, your swing looks kind of funky, but you get it compared to Ben Hogan, Lee Trevino, and Graham McDowell, you're probably going to be okay. All right, so there's Tommy Two Gloves.